but I always find with round objects and, and anything um, that's, that's somewhat round um, that you're always going to be better off using centers instead of trying to hit tangents and ends and endpoints and stuff. So. Hey everyone, welcome to episode 14 of the Modern Kitchen Renovation Series. If you've been following along, you know we've been building a modern kitchen from scratch for a private client of mine. And on the last episode, we actually finished um, some materials. We did the floor and a couple other um, material items, as well as adding some recessed lights to start lighting the space. Um, and then we ended uh, with me searching for a pendant light fixture that I simply could not find the uh, full-on Revit family that I wanted. And so that brings us to today's video we're going to take a break from the whole kitchen and we're going to sit down and we're going to spend about 10 minutes building a pendant light fixture from scratch one that is renderable one that looks good in elevation views floor plan views reflected ceiling plans and of course looks good rendered so uh, stay tuned i hope you enjoy this i think it'll be a, a great little lesson with a whole bunch of little uh, tips and tricks along the way if there's one thing that i want you to take away from this episode it's understanding the power of parametric families and parametric models and revit family.biz is a website that has a whole library of fully parametric models for your use thanks to brenton weiberg the creator of uh revfamily.biz um, he's offering 20 percent off of his cabinets doors windows you name it fully parametric awesome families for you to use um, just by using offer code 2022 revit kid not only did brenton sponsor this entire series but he also is offering that generous gift to you guys so check out this little video head on over to revitfamily.biz and then we'll jump right into our tutorial <music> And so with that, I think we will just jump right into Revit and uh, start right where we left off. So if you remember uh, where we left off was we were looking for a pendant family. Um, so I'm going to say file new family and I'm going to use a lighting fixture family. So I decided not to host this um, as a face based item. Um, I know a lot of people usually do that. The reason I don't is with pendant lights. If you do face based and you want it on like a uh, vaulted ceiling, for example, you know, it's going to it's going to tilt with the vault. Um, and so I actually kind of like just doing it based off of the reference level and then giving myself a, a height parameter. Um, there are other ways you can get around it, but you can see what I'm doing here is I'm actually creating a reference plane and I set at eight feet. And so I'm going to give myself the ability to, to adjust the height of the fixture um, off of the reference level, as well as the, the depth of the pendant from the ceiling. So again, I just created a two reference planes. Uh, I added dimensions using DI on my keyboard. I'm selecting those dimensions. I'm saying add parameter and I, or add label, uh, depending on which part you're looking at. And I added uh, two parameters, one for the ceiling and one for the offset. And so now what I'm doing here is I'm in my floor plan view. Uh, you can see I drew a circle. Um, I clicked the radius dimension and, and hit a little the little blue uh, dimension button, um, which, which turns it into a radius dimension. So you could just place a radius if you want. And then I'm selecting that, adding a parameter, and calling it plate radius. Um, so this is the plate on the top. And what you'll notice is I'm actually going to use a lot of circles in this, and I'm turning the center mark on. So if you select this circle um, and you say center mark on, you have the ability to use the align tool, which is what I use there, AL on my keyboard. Um, and you can align the center left and right to that reference plane. I know that was fast. Again, I was just recording this as I was going along. So I'm going to repeat it multiple times for, for different objects of this. So you'll see that this technique quite a bit. Uh, drawing a reference plane using RP on my keyboard, um, dimensioning it. Um, and then adding a label, um, calling it plate depth or plate depth, because I apparently spelled it wrong. So I think what I'm doing here is actually changing the, the uh, spelling to be correct. So now I'm adjusting the depth of the plate. So I have a, a, a parameter to do that. Now I'm going to take that extrusion, pull it up and lock it, and then pull it again and lock it. So I'm just pulling that extrusion and locking it to the reference planes. I know typically I would, and if you've read any of my courses, I would say flex and test. Um, obviously, I'm building this for myself, and I trust what I was doing. But yes, you should flex and test. So now I'm in my floor plan view. And you can see what I'm going to do here is I'm actually just adding a half inch um, circle. 
This is going to be the rod holding the, the whole pendant and doing the same thing here. I'm creating a radius dimension, selecting the dimension, adding a parameter, and then taking and showing the center line of the circle and then using that to align the circle, um, which will be a cylinder at the end of the day, um, with the reference planes. So select the sketch, check the box where it says center mark visible, AL on the keyboard, select the reference plane, select the center line and lock it. Select the other reference plane, select the center line and lock it. And then I created my uh, cable. And so you'll see the cables down at the bottom here. I'll take it, I'm gonna pull it up. And I'm gonna lock it to the plate. Uh, if you wanna use a line instead of pulling, you could make sure that you're locking to the reference plane. And then I realized here that I didn't have a reference plane um, that would uh, be able to lock the top of the um, the top of the cable to the top of the orb. So I actually just created one here and we'll just use um, a little a little a formula to tie that to the radius of the orb. So it's always at the radius of the orb. So you can see here cable offset, one foot and some change. And now I'm actually gonna draw a revolve. So uh, under create, I went to revolve. I select my axis and use the, the middle piece, uh, which is the, the uh, reference plane. I'm going to draw a half circle. So I'm drawing a line, I locked it. Um, I'm using an arc, center arc. I mean, really you can use any type of arc, it doesn't really matter. But the key here is that you'll notice I'm doing the same thing. I'm using a radius to control it. And then I'm actually going to use, so there we go, sphere, sphere radius. So now I have a perimeter that controls the sphere radius. And I'm actually gonna use the center mark here too. And that's why I use the center, center, um, a line arc or whatever. Um, you know, there's different ways to do arcs. You could you could attach the ends. You could attach different pieces. But I always find with round objects and and anything um, that's that's somewhat round um, that you're always going to be better off using centers instead of trying to hit tangents and ends and endpoints and stuff. So you'll see what I did there is I actually used the arc and I turned the center mark on and I locked it to that. Now I just took my sphere radius um, and I I made my cable offset equal my sphere radius. So now you saw the cable offset just drop down. I changed the thickness by accident. <laughs> and so now whenever that radius grows, that cable is actually going to go up and down to match it. So now it's it's doing exactly what we thought. And you can see here I have an orb. Um, I have a light source. I have a cable. And I have a a plate at the, at the ceiling level. And here I'm just going to mess with the radius. I'm going to test a few things. Notice how the radius shrunk, um, but the cable actually went with it. And of course, you can't make a family without applying a material parameter. So I selected those two objects, which are the cable and the plate, and I gave them a material parameter called cable and plate. Then I selected the orb, and I gave it a material called um, sphere material. <laughs> uh, and that material is going to end up being the light on material. And so just to see what this light source is, is all about, this is just a default light source in Revit. Um, and you could check um, the different things like the, the wattage. So I'm going to probably change the, the wattage to, to something that um, would start off with something brighter than I would imagine, which is 100 watts. I'm going to change the, um, the color of it, the initial color, um, to something uh, less yellow. <laughs> and so that was like a, a, a different Kelvin there. And then um, I am going to assign some materials. So some people have different opinions on assigning materials in the family environment or just giving people the option to do it. Um, here I'm doing both. I'm, I'm assigning the material in the environment. And then I think I'm going to assign the, the cable material outside of it. So this is going to be the light on material I mentioned in the previous episode. So I just made it white. Now I'm going to go to replace asset. And I'm going to search for the term light. Okay, when I search for the term light, and I go down to um, glass, I believe it's under. Uh, under the physical or the appearance library, not the physical assets. So I think I'm finding that out right now for you guys. <laughs> so I go down to glass and you can see there's all these light bulb and light bulb on and neon lights. And you'll notice these objects, they're, they're glass objects, um, but they have a, a self illumination um, option. So there's self illumination and you can change the color, you can change the wattage and so on and so forth. You can make it more clear, maybe not. And so now when you look at that thing, it's gonna look like it's on. So I'm going to save this and load it into my project. And now you can see what's nice about this is I'm, I'm in my floor plan view and I'm just placing it um, because remember it's based on the level. So you can see it's just placing on a level one or first floor. I don't remember what it's called in this project. Then I'm just going to use some quick dimensions to um, center it on the island. 
and then I'll check my elevations and my section views to make sure that it's how I want it to be. And this is where the parametric part comes in handy. As you can see, it looks pretty cool, but obviously the height and it is a little off. So now I can change my cable length. And there we go. And then I can also start changing the orb um, dimensions if I wanted. Um, you can see what I'm trying to play with here is I, I don't want it to be at perfect eye level. Um, obviously, you know, we don't necessarily want it to block the views and stuff. So I end up making it a little bit smaller. So there I go changing the sphere radius and then I crank up the, the height a little bit as well. Um, I think I went up to like six foot six. So for most people, uh, including myself, six foot six would be enough to look under. I know some tall folks out there, I apologize. Uh, but um, so, so, so here I am adjusting that. Now I'm just um, assigning uh, the materials of the cable and the plate to something that already existed in the project, which was a high glass, high gloss black. And boom, there we have it. There's our orb, just like that. Notice how it's creating light on the ceiling. Um, it's creating light in the space. Um, that that material is self glowing. Um, uh, you know, so, so it's it's also producing a little light. If I if I turn the the sun down a little bit, you can see this is all artificially lit right now. And it's also a really nice design element. Remember, this is a, a mid-century modern house. This is a 1950s mid-century modern house. And so we're, we're, we're sort of um, you know, throwing it back to, to some interesting uh, design uh, ideas from, from back in the day. Um, here I'm just playing with the Enscape the background. Um, this is actually out in, the, out in the hills in Connecticut. And um, so um, you'll see as we, as we build the Enscape scene, I start tweaking that. And there we have it. Now we're starting to get a scene that looks really, really neat. So I know that was pretty fast and um, I wanted it to be fast because obviously there's a lot of content there, but I'm hoping that that shows you um, how you can quickly build a family in within the, the realm of a project. Um, you know, people are always so focused on building family libraries and, and figuring out how many of this, this, that, and this, that, that, that you need. Well, this is, uh, you know, what we're doing here is we're building as needed a parametric family that now I can use any other time. And it didn't take that long. Um, yes, I was going fast. I've done this for, for quite some time, but you saw there, it took maybe nine minutes to build that thing from scratch. That was not sped up by the way. That was, that was real time speed. So like nine, 10 minutes to build from scratch. So even someone who, who may not have as much experience in Revit as me could probably do that in 30 minutes or so. And so you don't always need to build this entire content library ahead of time. Um, building things on the fly and having that skill set of being able to build parametric families when you need them is huge. Right, that's massive. Um, so hope you enjoyed this. I hope this was a great little lesson for you guys. On our next episode, we're actually going to finalize this Enscape scene. We're going to start adding, finishing up any materials, adding some entourage, um, making this thing renderable, a live scene that we can use. And then we're going to continue on making our presentation graphics, our Enscape renderings, and then we're going to present this to a client. So thank you guys for joining me. I really appreciate it. If you enjoy this series, please subscribe to the channel and I'll talk to you soon.